vakke is takelau. En on this vakke are our tupuna or ancestors, our grandparents, our mothers, our fathers, our children, our future generations. They are all on the vakke and they all have a role to play. They have a contribution. Their view is valued and they are part of the solution. Tokelau is our ancestral home. We are a territory of New Zealand in the South Pacific. Our nearest neighbours are Samoa, 500 kilometres to the south, and Tuvalu, more than 1,000 kilometres to the west. We are a Pacific community leading by example to save our home for current and future generations. Supported by science, our neighbours and New Zealand we live and work together by our traditions. We strive to keep Takelau alive, thriving and healthy, now and long into the future. Na <laughs> So you can see that around it will live climate change. We are known as a New Zealand territory, but like Tonga, like Tuvalu, like Samoa, we have challenges that are different from New Zealand. So uh, that's why it's very important for us to have a say, to let the world that uh, we are living with this, uh, the impacts of climate change. Your Excellencies, recently I visited the remote atolls of Tokelau in the South Pacific. With a population of 1,500 people that is only accessible by boat, they have a story not often heard, but a message that must be shared. It's a message underscored by their new coastal walls, which are already toppling over as a result of the assault by the sea, and by the children who tell you they are worried about the future of their home. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a message of urgency. Um, and I, I, I'm asking myself about the issue of climate change. For at the moment, we can see a very big difference from the past up to now. Very, very hard for me to, to say, how can I leave this, this island as a special one? Despite its small footprint, Tokelau is at the front line of climate change. And in particular in places like Tokelau, their emissions are tiny, but the impacts that they will see of the global emissions will be huge. 
So since the Industrial Revolution, we've actually um, almost almost doubled, not quite doubled yet, uh, the carbon dioxide concentration in our atmosphere, and that's having a significant impact on our climate. As a global community, it's obvious that we need to make big effort to, to reduce our emissions of greenhouse gases. So in 2017, Tokelau endorsed its climate change strategy called a Living with Change. To move these strategies forward, data is essential. This includes the creation of an inventory of Tokelau's greenhouse gas emissions. Through its mitigation strategy, Tokelau aims to further reduce its already low carbon emissions. Tokelau is really leading in terms of like trying to establish a realistic um, greenhouse gas uh, inventory. So. After doing all the consultation with the villagers, going about identifying all the data that we required, we then put it into the um, testing out using the guidelines from the IPC to come up with Tokelau's greenhouse gas inventory. And of course, what we found is the energy sector, basically power, electricity generation, is by far the most critical one for Tokelau. Uh, Tokelau switched to solar power in 2012 and made the headline for its renewable energy. Tokelau does not sit back and wait for things to happen. The off-grid solar system there is perfectly suited for uh, you know, a small island like this. You know, it's, it's been a bit of a launching model for um, the rest of the Pacific Islands, hence they're putting them in everywhere, all over the Pacific now. Renowned for our success with solar energy, Tokelau is now transitioning to a hybrid system that combines both solar and wind generation. It's just a backup system. It's on a sunny day, you don't need it. But we do, believe it or not, we do get windy days and they do go on and on. I've forgotten that term. <laughs> I'll think of it shortly. Islands in the wind here. <laughs> they don't call it islands in the wind for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. As the climate crisis intensifies, so too does the likelihood of catastrophic weather events in the Pacific. To protect our people, Tokelau depends on reliable weather information. Tokelau aims to reduce and manage its climate risks while increasing resilience to natural disasters. AWS is, stands for Automatic Weather Station. The beauty of the automatic weather station is you don't have to have a 24-7 you know, shift work to be able to monitor the climate and the, and the weather. 
again it's come down to data 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 tropical data is critical to early warnings of any storm that will strike Tokelau it's critical in terms of to enable people to prepare for the storm because we have no mountains to run to in terms of a tidal wave or a storm surge. We are very conscious of this issue because it's affecting our lives and our uh, future generations. When I grew up, there were small islands existed, but now you see nothing there. Mahuatalingaluna, <laughs> Change compels people to move in ways that previous generations might never have imagined. In Tokelau, this means preparing ourselves to face an uncertain future while maintaining a connection with our culture and with the traditional customs of our people. We see the future, we rise for the children. That expresses resilience in terms of collectiveness. Our school here has been particularly um, strong in what we call context embedded learning, which is learning that looks at a real life context and then the students have the freedom to investigate what is the issue, how is it affecting us, who's being affected, what are the impacts, and um, what's the cost, and so forth. So I'll give you a specific example. One key um, context that the students looked at was how healthy is our reef? They learned that their reef is not healthy. Because of the carbon cycle, some of that carbon dioxide gets uh, dissolved in our oceans. The result of that absorption is that the ocean is actually becoming more acidic. So this is this process of ocean acidification uh, and it is quite alarming as well because even though the changes are relatively minor, the um, the ecosystems in our ocean are very sensitive to the level of acidity in the water. Corals are very sensitive to warm waters. And one, one interesting property of corals is that they form a symbiosis with an algae. And together, as a team, what they're able to do is be much more productive if the water temperature increases too far, it destabilizes the symbiosis between these two partners. And so when the algae is gone, the coral dies. It goes beyond just the physical structure, it's also all the fish that may eat the coral, that live on the coral. 
um, as all of the ecosystem services that coral reefs provide are then compromised because the corals really are the foundation. And uh, yeah, it, it can destabilize the ecosystem if too much coral death occurs. But the long-term goal is to reduce emissions so that corals can recover on their own. We can only benefit from working together and bringing cultural knowledge and, and scientific knowledge together as one, like long-term traditional cultural knowledge that can inform us about what the ecosystem was like before we started to affect it. So one of the solutions that the children posed, because they were learning also from what's available on the internet, was coral planting. The coral is pretty dead from this part to that part. Uh, horizontally and vertically, it's pretty much not a healthy reef. And they bring their findings to the highest level of decision making in the village, which is the taupurenga. And in terms of their traditional knowledge, they know which parts of the reef are thriving. Decisions on protecting the, the corals and to ensure we had enough fish for food security because uh, fish is our main source of food in Tokelau. We heavily rely on fish to survive on this isolated uh, island. Yeah. The people must really, really be informed. They can have their own opinions, but they have to consider what the science is saying. It's not a uh, one person thing. It's, uh, it's a collective uh, responsibility for, for our children and for the, the whole world, I think. We come to realize, to strengthen our traditional knowledge, we need the science. And that is how we can work with the outside world. We are part of something bigger than Tokelo. Why are we doing it for what, what is the purpose? Do we hope to leave anything behind? For who? For a continued existence. It's important that we do this thing. It's a legacy that was left behind. And it's our role to continue that, to create a safer place for our children and for those that are yet to come. The waka will get through all the rough seas. Our elders are at the stern. They will keep everything calm. The Hatupai Pai will provide and look after our young people. The Aumanga, all the able bodied, our church leaders, our teachers in the classroom. Every member of the community is looked after. The waka will have everyone on board. It is a collective responsibility.
Tronco. 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 Yeah. Okay.